Hey everyone, Kenny Jacobs here, and I uh, just want to do a, another video because uh, there's some really interesting news stories happening, including one taking place this coming week. And uh, there is without a doubt a real convergence of major prophetic signs coming together at the same time. It has been going on for a number of years, but it's speeding up and it's really, it's really, really apparent. If, you're, if you have your eyes open and you're watching, we are living in the very last days. And I don't believe anything happens by coincidence, and God has a plan, and his, his, uh, his plan will come together. I believe wholeheartedly, 100% in his word. I believe it is real, it is literal, and it is true. And I believe that the, the signs are coming to pass like never before. So having said that, uh, let's uh, just get into some things. And give you a little background, and I'll just read a few headlines at the end of this. Um, but I do not believe at all that it's a coincidence that the nation of Israel was born 70 years ago. Along with that, about 73 years ago, the United Nations was born. United Nations, the human government's answer to world peace. The, uh, in fact, the United Nations, and let me just... Let me just Turn to Isaiah. If you go to the United Nations, out in, uh, in front of the building is a statue or a sculpture, and uh, Isaiah has Isaiah chapter two verse four on it, which says, "And he shall judge among the nations, and shall rebuke many people, and they shall beat their swords into plowshares." and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. The problem with that is the United Nations is not going to bring that about. The United Nations is not the answer to man's problems. Human government is not the answer to man's problems. Mankind will never usher in a true Peace. That, that verse in Isaiah is referring to Jesus Christ and his government when he comes back to set up his millennial reign on earth for a thousand years. And he is actually ahead of the head of the government. Human government will culminate with the government of the Antichrist, the one world dictatorship, the one world religion, the one world government, the one world economy, the one world economic system known as the mark of the beast. Now, I want to turn to Psalm 80, or excuse me, Psalm 90. Psalm 90 because, again, as I said, I don't believe anything happens by coincidence, and all these signs are coming together like never before, because we are the generation that is going to see the return of Jesus Christ. And, uh, again, 70 years, Israel, a nation, 73 years, United Nations. Let's go to Isaiah, or excuse me, Psalm, verse, Psalm, Psalm 90, verse 1. Lord, thou hast been our dwelling place in all generations. Psalm 90, verse 10. How long is a generation? Psalm 90, verse 10 says, The days of our years are threescore years and ten. Seventy years. Threescore years and ten. And if by reason of strength they be fourscore years. Right out of the word of God, a revelation, or a, a regeneration, 70 to 80 years. And we're 70 years from, since the nation of Israel. God's prophetic time clock. And the world is now calling for total change. There's chaos all around the world. We hear the new world order mentioned all the time. We hear about globalization. Pope Francis is certainly pulling that together, and I'm going to talk more about Pope Francis and his and some headlines here in a minute. So, what's happening this week? The One Planet Summit in Paris. The One Planet Summit. Uh, it's two years since the Paris Climate Change Agreement was signed. The one that Donald Trump famously has uh, kind of pulled us out of. Uh, all four, him pulling us out of that. It's the basis of the one world religion. Pope Francis wrote an encyclical on climate change. He went and spoke at the United Nations. 
the United Nations 2030 Sustainable Development Agenda is based on Pope Francis's climate change encyclical. Pope Francis is talking about Mother Earth and he's trying to bring everybody together in harmony and peace under a one world religion under the Vatican. Now, what's very interesting about that is uh, now we have the One Planet Summit. We're going to keep seeing more and more calls to global unity and, and, and a one world religion so we don't have religious wars. We've got this chaos now in Jerusalem over the over, uh, United States recognizing uh, Jerusalem as Israel's capital. It rightfully is, but now that's causing more chaos. And, and it, somebody's going to come on the scene and seem to have the answers to this. There's going to be major wars. There's going to be all sorts of bloodshed. Unfortunately, the Bible says that when they shall say peace and safety, sudden destruction shall come upon them. As travail upon a woman, a woman with child, and they shall not escape. That is First Thessalonians chapter five, verse three. Well, here's a few headlines, and uh, uh, here's one: uh, One Planet Summit, two years after historical Paris Agreement. Another headline: France, France, and the World Bank, and the United Nations are hosting the One Planet. Summit. If you read about this, and I highly recommend you do, get online and read about this One Planet Summit, they're trying to finance this global climate change agenda. I'll get more into that here in a minute with scripture. But note, it says France and the United Nations and the World Bank. Who is the leader of France? Emmanuel Macron. Now, I don't think, again, that irony does not get lost on me that his name is Emmanuel, God with us. He's an atheist, but his name is Emmanuel, God with us. <clears throat> the I'm not saying Macron is the Antichrist. I don't believe we're going to know who the Antichrist is because I believe uh, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 says that the restraining force, which I believe is the Holy Spirit-filled church, will be removed and then shall that wicked be revealed. But I can certainly see things on the horizon and all the signs that the Bible told us to look for coming together and, and the leaders who are going to be taking or, you know, charge of this situation are certainly taking office and taking shape now. But I just don't, the irony of Emmanuel Macron, Emmanuel, God with us, being the man in France, part of Europe, the revived Roman Empire, is, that, that irony is not lost on me. And so Macron is over there. He's going to be involved. Uh, along with that, here's another headline. Emmanuel Macron steps into the Middle East role as the U.S. retreats. Macron in Mideast peace, stepping into the Middle East peace process. Try, he's, and, and here we go. Uh, uh, Francis Macron regrets Trump's unilateral Jerusalem decision. As we see the rioting going on over in Jerusalem, the chaos taking off, Macron is, is, is uh, speaking out against Trump and doing that and getting more involved in the Middle East peace process. And here's the headline, Macron wins prestigious Charlemagne Award. Another headline, uh, Macron speaks to the world, but does he speak to France? Uh, and then uh, another headline uh, money is the key to the success of the One Planet Summit. That's why the World Bank is there. The World Bank, and it says money is the key to the success of the One World Planet Summit. Well, let's turn to Revelation chapter 13. I quote this scripture quite often these days. Uh, Revelation chapter 13, verse 16 and 17. And he causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. 
<clears throat> the world will control all the resources under the, under the Antichrist and the false prophet. They will enforce this mark of the beast system. Pope Francis is nonstop talking about poverty and trying to control, uh, you know, eliminate world poverty, which is not going to happen. I'm all in favor of trying to help the poor and trying to take care of poor nations and help people in need. Absolutely. But I'm not in favor of a one world government that's going to dictate all resources because they're not going to take care of the poor either. They're going to make you think they are so they can bring in their one world government. The whole world is looking for somebody that seems to have the answers to all the mess the world is in. And I can assure you, Jesus Christ is the only answer. And this mess will not be cleaned up until he comes back. In fact, Jesus said in Scripture, the poor you will always have, but you will not always have me. If Jesus says we will always have poor, I know we'll always have poor. Absolutely, we should try to help the poor. But this global climate change agenda and, and stamping out poverty is not really the true agenda, and it is not going to happen. But people are buying this hook, line, and sinker, and it is forming faster than you can ever imagine. And Pope Francis again, um, Pope endorses the, the Paris summit. Why? Because again, it's based on his climate change encyclical and, and this redistribution, redistribution of the world's economy, basically, to help the uh, poor and to save the climate. <clears throat> we are absolutely coming down to the wire. We are living in the last days and and i pray that you know jesus christ and that you are ready if you do not turn to jesus in faith right now the bible says that all who call upon the name of the lord shall be saved and jesus made it clear that he was the way the truth and the life yeah, he is not was he is the way the truth and the life no man comes to the father but by him there are not many paths there are this world is full of of evil it is full of, of false religions and there's one true God, and then Jesus Christ is the answer. He is coming back soon. The final uh, government system under the Antichrist will be here before this world knows it. Turn to Jesus while there's still time. God bless everyone.